But you know, even for adults, for some people it's easier, and for some people it's more difficult. I mean, it all depends on our karma, it all depends on our practice that we have done before. What kind of practice? Paloma. I, I, can't, I never remember Pali names. It takes me a long time. What kind of practice have you done? How long did you stay in India? And what kind of practice did you do? It's different. Yeah, of course it's different. I mean, being in a Hindu temple, you know, and then being in a in a, a Theravadan temple, you know, it's very different. It's very different. Yes. <coughs> so, I mean... Uh, I think this question doesn't really apply. It does apply, but uh, I'm... I mean, I cannot explain it mm. in a, how I could explain the kind of practice you see. I mean, this... this When you're here at this temple, this is the kind of practice that leads to the end of Dukkha. That is the teaching of the Lord Buddha. I mean, there's, there's Buddhism. And at the time of the Lord Buddha, there was Hinduism already, you know. But, uh, Brahmanism. Brahmanism. <coughs> so, and the Lord, the Lord Buddha found the way, you know, found the way out of Dukkha. He proclaimed the Four Noble Truths. The Noble Truth <coughs> of Dukkha. The First Noble Truth of Dukkha. We have Dukkha. What is Dukkha? It's not only pain and suffering. It's boredom, discontent, discomfort, pain, suffering. It's all Dukkha. Dukkha is just a container for all these unpleasant things. And then he explained us why we have to come. Because we want, we desire, hmm? or we desire not. Hmm? We desire to be, or some people desire not to be. Hmm? Desire to become this, or desire not to become this. That is the reason why we have to come. If you just sit there, you know, and don't desire anything, we don't have to come. And the third noble truth is the path that, le- uh, that there is an end of Dukkha. And the fourth noble truth is the path that leads to the end of Dukkha. And the path that leads to the end of Dukkha is Sila, Samadhi and Panya. Sila are the five precepts. Not to harm any living being. That's the first precept. Not to take what is not given is the second precept. Not to lie using harsh speech, you know, putting people down, you know, or criticizing them with the intention of putting them down. The fourth, no sexual misconduct. That means, you know, being faithful in one's relationship or being faithful in one's marriage. Not having, you know, not having wrong sex. That means, you know, teacher-student relationship or having wrong sex in the sense of having sex with animals. That's sexual, that's all called sexual misconduct. And the fifth are no alcohol and no drugs. Everything that makes us unmindful. These are the five precepts. These are the five protections. Huh? Why are they protections? They protect us from falling down into the lower realms. What are the lower realms? The animal realms, the ghost realm, the demon realms, and the hell realms. So these five precepts are our protection. If we keep them, we don't fall down. Hmm? Just like a rail, you know, on a cliff is a protection, you know, where we can hold on to, you know, so that we don't fall down the cliff. So the Lord Buddha saw this. If we keep these five precepts, we do not fall down. If we do not keep them, you know, we will fall down. There is no way that we cannot fall down. I mean, if we keep the five precepts, I mean, it is the same thing as, as we have the right to become a human being again after our death. But it's not enough to go up to the heavenly realms. 
what is necessary to go up to the heavenly realms. All that, all that, about the, what is it, 31, yeah? I think 31 realms of the heaven, huh? 31, 32, yeah, something like that. 31 realms of the heaven, I mean, we have to develop virtues. What kind of virtues do we have to develop to, to, to get up to the heavenly realms? We have to develop the virtue of generosity, huh? to give. We have to develop the, the virtue of respect, respecting others, respecting beings. And we have to develop the virtue of gratitude, being grateful for what is given to us. Not constantly demand, this is, belongs to me, this is my right. You know, that's not, that's not gratitude. If, if, if we go to work, you know, and, and, and we find work, you know, then we should be grateful that we get some work. If you're looking for, if you're looking for a house to rent or for a house to buy, we should be, we should be grateful that somebody sells us this house or somebody rents us this house. But we think, we always think, you know, this is, you know, this is my right. Mm -hmm. And that's where we turn ungrateful. To have good parents is not our right, you know. Being grateful that we had good parents, that we had good teachers, that we had good schools, you know. That's all. Not our right. Just look around you, you know, and you will see a lot of people who don't have that right. Huh? Who don't have good parents, who don't have good schools, who don't have good people. Huh? Who don't get a work, you know. Even if they're looking for so hard. It's a result of our karma, hmm? of our good work, you know, that we get some work, or that we get a good teacher, or that we get good parents, or that we are born in a, in a nice country. It's all due to our karma. So be grateful, don't demand. Hmm? So these three virtues, gratefulness, respect, Respect is of utmost importance. If we don't respect the Dharma, I mean, we will not be able to practice. If we always, if we constantly think, you know, that Dharma, you know, that the Lord Buddha teaches is out of date, you know, then, I mean, then we will never be able to go the path to the end of the world. There was no person in the last 10,000 years who was, who was more virtuous than the Lord Buddha, who was more clever than the Lord Buddha. When the Lord Buddha laid something down, that was it. He saw in the past, he saw in the future. He knew exactly what, you know, what he was laying down, you know, would happen. So now we come, you know, with a lot of education, we read the Dhamma, and we don't think, you know, we think, ah, that's outdated, you know, in modern times it should be like this or it should be like that. I mean, that is not right. I mean, if we are cleverer than the Lord Buddha, why do we have to take this path? Uh, don't, don't, don't take pictures while I'm giving a talk. Mm -hmm. That's disturbing. You know? I mean, when I finish the talk, you know, <coughs> I mean, don't even think so. No? I mean, because that, that thought, you know, will bear your way. No? I mean, there is no person who was more purified than the Lord Buddha. There is no person, you know, for the last 10,000 years who, who has been more clever than the Lord Buddha. We are just having this cleverness of the world, the worldly cleverness. But he had the cleverness of the Dhamma. I mean, he found the way to the end of Dukkha. We are not even able to find this way. We are not even able to, to, to follow the path of the Lord Buddha to the end of Dukkha. No? Think about it. Yeah? Think about the wisdom of the Lord Buddha. And now we're just clever. You know? We just educated ourselves. We know a lot. You know? But knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom is an important, a very important part on the, on, on, on the path of practice. Hmm? 
I just explained the five precepts. I explained the three virtues, you know, if you want to go to the heavenly realms that we have to. But also these three virtues, you know, we have to develop to a certain degree if you want to, to, to take this path to the end of Dukkha. Without respect for the Dharma, I mean, we will not go far. Without gratitude towards our teachers, we will not go far. <laughs> Without generosity, I mean, we will not go far. People constantly forget it. I mean, these are things, these are basic things that we need to have. I mean, just, you know, just when I came from Germany in July, you know, (laughs) I mean, I I was disappointed, you know. I I thought, you know, what is the reason? So I went to see some of the Thai Achans who had had some experience, you know, with with foreigners. And I asked them, what is the problem? Right, yeah? I mean, they are, they're really determined. When they come and practice, they are really determined to practice. I mean, why, why don't they succeed? Huh? And both of these are trying to say, they're lacking the basis. No, they're lacking the basis, you know. We, we have successfully eradicated, you know, generosity. Huh? I mean, really generosity, not just giving something for a certain purpose. Huh? Generosity, because, you know, you, you want to give. Huh? That's generosity. Just the joy of giving. Not think, ah, is he doing right with my money? Is it is that worthwhile to give some money? No, just giving. That's generosity. Respect and gratitude, because that's lack. I mean, we successfully in the West eradicate it because we've seen it. You know, it doesn't lead to to you know to wealth. No? We cannot gain anything. You know, if you are generous, I mean, we we, we lose our money. That's <coughs> what we say. No? Same thing with, you know, if you respect other people, I mean, we cannot climb up the ladder, huh? And get the position. Huh? That's what we think, you know. Of course, it's wrong thinking, but, you know, nobody tells us that. <clears throat> and if you are grateful, you know, I mean, look at us, you know, we constantly demand, you know, I want to be in this position, now it's my right, you know, to inherit my father's wealth, you know, or, you know, to get this or to get that, you know, our parents are just the, the ATM machine, you know? Please give us some money, huh? Please give us this, or please give us that. Please cook for us, or please that. That's not gratefulness. Huh? That's not gratitude. So the second column, you know, of the path that leads out to the end of Dukkha is Samadhi. I mean, I explained it before. Samadhi is the ability to concentrate. Concentrate on one point. If it's in the beginning, if it's too difficult, we can have two points. I mean, normally the point is the, uh, the, the, the tip of the nose and there we feel the breath coming in, coming out. We do not follow the breath. We just stick our concentration right to the nose. Huh? And that's where we observe the breath coming in, coming out. That's called anapanasati. Hmm? We can also do buddha, hmm? the mental repetition. Or, you know, some, some people in the West call it a mantra. Mental repetition of the word Buddha, 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 Buddha. Hmm? Nothing else. Whenever the mind goes out, we pull it back. Huh? Or you know, if, it, if the mind in the beginning is very unconcentrated, we can use put with breathing in and do with breathing out. Huh? It helps in uh, some of the people, helps in the beginning. Hmm? Because then they have to focus on two activities. Huh? So the mind doesn't slip, uh, slip away so easily. How we do that, you know, until the mind becomes quiet, until there are no thoughts, hmm? until we enter Upachara Samadhi. Upachara Samadhi means excess Samadhi. We enter it, you know, and there are no more thoughts. So what is it when there are no more thoughts? When there are no more thoughts, there are no more worries. There is no more fear. Because it cannot arise, fear without thoughts cannot arise. There can only feelings can arise, you know. There are no more fears. There is no, uh, there is no past and there is no future. There is only this present moment, the awareness of this present moment. Be it now the present moment, be it the breath or be it the Buddha or be it other things. Hmm? Just things appear and disappear, appear and disappear. 
I mean, Upachara Samadhi is, you know, you're in the hail or in the storm or in storm and lightning in the middle of the night, you know, in the deep forest, and then you see a glass house. Yeah? You open the door to the glass house and you enter in. You close the door behind you so the rain doesn't come in, and you feel safe. Well, it's our safe house. Hmm? Upachara Samadhi is our safe house. That's where we can relax. Huh? I mean, the storm is still going on. But we feel safe. Huh? Because it doesn't touch us. Huh? Even the lightning, you know, that strikes doesn't make us afraid. Because we know we are safe. Hmm? We are in a safe haven. Hmm? And that is Upachara Samadhi. The moment we go out of this glass door again, I mean... Instantly the rain will hit us, you know, and the lightning will make us afraid and the darkness will make us afraid. The moment we enter again, you know, we feel safe. Because there are no more thoughts. Huh? I mean, it's, it's a wondrous state of mind. I mean, I call it the, the world of experience. It's just experience. There are no thoughts that tell us what we experience. So that in this state, you know, we realize for the first time we don't need the thoughts to explain. Huh? What is happening? Because we experience it ourselves. Then nobody needs to tell us what we experience because we experience it. Huh? That's why I call, you know, the Kilesas, you know, uh, uh, KGB, Kilesas Broadcasting Company. I mean, they're turning on 24 hours a day, you know. And when the, the moment we enter Upachara Samadhi, we enter that safe house and they are turned off. I mean, you can, comp- you can compare it when you like football or, in, or baseball, you know, and you go to the game. I mean, you sit there you, and you watch this game, you know, and you see what is going on. But instead, you know, of believing your own eyes and ears, you know, you listen to the commentator who is over loudspeaker says, this is happening on the field, that is happening on the field, this and this and this and just this, you know, uh, uh, uh. I mean, that's a commentator. That's KGB, Kilesa's Broadcasting Company. And we believe it. We don't believe our own heart. We don't believe our own eyes. We don't believe anymore our own experience. Hmm? Because we believe only the person who tells us what kind of experience we have. He tells us, this is fear, this is, you know, this is pain, this is this, this is that. And we don't know it. What is fear? Huh? What is pain? We don't know it because the co- instantly, you know, something comes up, the commentator tells, this is pain. You have to get away from it. I don't like it. Huh? This is fear. You have to get away from it. I don't like it. Huh? And we follow it. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord, you are right. You have been right, you know, from the moment I have been born until the moment I die. And you will lead me to the next life. So you must be right. You know, what I see and what I, you know, what I feel is not right. Hmm? So when we enter the Supatra Samadhi, I mean, suddenly, you know, something separates out, you know. The Kilesas at the moment, you know, we enter this glass house, are gone. Are waiting, you know, until we come out of the glass house. Hmm? And then they grab us again. And then tell us, you know, that was nice. That was, uh, uh. I mean, as if you didn't know. I mean, as if you are so stupid. Huh? I mean, when you look at it, when you enter Utpacha Samadhi, when you get out, I mean, just look at the difference. There's a big difference. Huh? But we don't know it. We believe it. We believe it. You know, they tell us, come here, you know, do this, do that, do that, you know, do it, you know. But we actually have not realized, you know, that these, you know, kilesas are the hooligans. Huh? I mean, if you have an apartment or if you own a house, huh? I mean, and you see some strange people coming in, you know, ready to pack up, you know, to, to, to violate your, you know, your privacy. I mean, you don't open the door for them. Huh? But now, what are you doing, you know? I mean, we open our heart. Come in, come in, destroy me. It's so nice, you know. Huh? Huh? Why? Huh? Ask yourself, why do we invite them? 
Why don't we close them off, shut them off, you know? Say, go away, you know, I don't want you. Hmm? Because we have to take care of the mess they make in the heart. Hmm? These are the hooligans, huh? I mean, just look at the football games, you know? Huh? Brazil, you know, is very famous with football games. Look at the, you know, spectators, you know, how they beat each other up, you know, after the game. Hmm? Or while the game, yeah? These are the hooligans, you know? What do I have to do with the play, with the game? They have nothing to do. So there's disturbance. Hmm? And they enter our heart, you know, they make a mess out of it. And then we feel sorry or afraid or, you know, worried, you know? If we don't let them in, there's no worry, and there's no, no, there's no sorrow, there's no pain, there's nothing. Huh? There's just the experience, you know, a wondrous state of mind, you know, of peacefulness or happiness, or it can be even pity, or it be, can, can be just calm. Hmm? Just shut them out, you know. I mean, be determined, you know, not to let them enter your heart. Huh? Most important. That is only upachaya samadhi. So then, you know, after a while, when we see there are no more thoughts and we are satisfied with that, then we go on, you know, concentrating on our buddha or on the breath, you know, until the mind really focuses it on one point. It becomes more concentrated, more concentrated, more concentrated. Until the, both these two things, you know, the one who knows it and, and, and the object, that means that the breath or the Buddha, you know, merge to one thing. And then everything disappears. No? Not only our thoughts disappear, the body disappears. Sometimes we can feel it already in the deep state of Upachara Samadhi that the lower body is gone, you know, and then, you know, even more of the body is gone. But in the end, you know, the whole body is gone. There's no more body. There's no more noise. There's nothing that is done. And there's only what remains is knowingness. Knowingness, not knowing of objects, but knowingness in itself. Because if the whole world collapses into one point, what can there be? What can we see? And that is the first wonder of meditation that we can experience. I mean, that is the preview of Nibbana. I mean, if you want to go to Nibbana and are curious about what Nibbana is, that's where you have to go. Huh? Go in there, you know, and see it. You know, when you come out, you know. I mean, I guarantee you, the first thought will be, how do I get back? Hmm? I mean, it's such an amazing state of mind. Hmm? There is no ego, there is nothing. You know? There is just pure no. I mean... There is no time, there is no space, there is no body, there is no consciousness. You know, just no. All the five khandas have disappeared in the background. The moment we get out, well, of course they are back. No? And the longer we've been into this apana samadhi or deep state of samadhi, I mean, when we come out, we feel, you know, that the kilesas are really, you know, just like the hooligans. No? I mean, we feel like we... Be, are in the front, you know, between two fronts of the enemy, you know, shooting at us. You know? With all these senses, you know, suddenly, you know, it, the impact is so strong because we are so concentrated. We are so aware. You know? <coughs> so that is the root, that is the root of samadhi. What is the third thing? What is the third column? We have to ra raise all three columns, you know, to, 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 to raise our house, you know, to, <coughs> to the end of Dukkha. And the third column is the most important, is pan, wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge. <coughs> I mean, we can read as many books, you know, as we want. We can go to as many teachers as we want. This is not wisdom. This is just knowledge. Wisdom is something that we have to develop. Hmm? I mean, <clears throat> we go to one teacher. No? He gives us 
recipe. How to attain this, how to attain that, how to attain that. It's like a cookbook. So, I mean, you know, a cookbook for making a cake. It says, you know, this amount of flour, this, you know, so many eggs, you know, this baking soda, salt, you know, and, and water, you know, or milk. Huh? Put them together, you know, mix them up, put them in the oven, you know, and we will have a cook. We will have a cake. Is that wisdom? No. That was the wisdom of our teacher. That he came up with this recipe. I mean, if you just follow the recipes, we will not gain any wisdom. We will gain some experience. Yes, what he says is true. Yes, what he says is true. Yes, what he says is true. But wisdom doesn't grow this way. I mean, what is the wisdom? Wisdom is to come up with these recipes. Hmm? To get new recipes, huh? We just follow it, you know. I mean, where, where is the wisdom coming from? Hmm? Huh? 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 I mean, we have to be alert, you know. That's why we have to have sati. We have to be alert, you know. Of course, you know, we will follow, you know, the teachings of, you know, of our teacher. He hmm? says, you know, just go this path. Huh? <clears throat> the better the teacher, the less specific the path to train our wisdom. Yeah, what am I going to do now? Huh? That is where wisdom develops. So I try out the wrong path, then I realize this is the wrong path, then I try out this path, and I realize this is the wrong path, and then I try out the next path, and then I realize that is the right path. That's where wisdom is good. That is where wisdom develops. Not just following something. <clears throat> Actually, you know, even if you read the, the teachings of the Lord Buddha, you cannot follow it, you know. I mean, you have to, to, to develop on your, your own, you know. You just get the guidelines, you know. Go in this direction, then go in that direction. But he doesn't say what happens in this direction, along this path. Huh? I mean, you have to use your own wisdom. You have to develop your own wisdom. How can I go, you know? I mean, if it's a steep mountainside, you know, I mean, you, ha you, you have to be very, very careful. You know, if it's a wide open, I mean, you don't have to be that careful, you know? But if it's a desert, you know, you have to be, you know, it's always different. Each day of our practice is different. And that's why, you know, we cannot just, you know, go, go, go with the same broom over all the different dirts, huh? For some dirt, you know, we, we need a special broom, you know, a very detailed, a very subtle broom. You know? For others, you know, we, we need a grub and a groot broom. Huh? I mean, that is, that is the thing that we have to learn, you know. We can only learn in the moment we make mistakes, yeah. When everything is fine, you know, we're just sitting in the supercharged samadhi, we come out, you know, and then we go back in again. And then that, the wisdom is not born in that. Huh? You cannot be born in that, and wisdom is crucial. Hmm? The only thing, you know, that cuts down on the kilesas forever is wisdom. So, I mean, some of the Westerners were smart and said, okay, you know, forget about sila, forget about samadhi, you know, we just train wisdom. Huh? And cut down the kilesas, you know. <clears throat> How can you do that? I mean, when, when you just listen to what I said, you know, how to train wisdom. Hmm? Wisdom doesn't develop, you know, by, by hearing something or by reading something or hearing a lot and reading a lot. I mean, all our scholars must be f very wise people. No, they're very knowledgeable people. They're not wise. Because if they come into an unknown situation, they don't know how to handle it. Even though they have a lot of knowledge, you know. So, I mean, that's, that, it's crucial, you know, this wisdom. And it is, I mean, it is completely underdeveloped in the West. We always think, you know, wisdom and knowledge is the same thing. The more we know, the better we are. I mean, you know, the cleverness of the world, if we apply it to Dhamma, I mean, the cleverness is wisdom. But it's wisdom of the world, huh? Now, some clever people from the West come, you know, and apply this cleverness to the Dhamma. So it's worldly Dhamma. 
It's not the Dharma that you find inside. I mean, you can apply this cleverness, you know, along the path that you are taught. And that's where it becomes to develop the cleverness of Dhamma. But you just cannot put it one to one, you know, onto Dhamma and say, now I'm clever in Dhamma. No. The cleverness, how to deal with certain situations in the world, if you apply it to the, the path that you're going, the path of training, you know, then it will become, eventually it develop into wisdom of the Dhamma. So if you can teach that, you know, but normally they just apply it, you know, one to one, you know, and that's, you know, that, that's where it goes from. Developing wisdom is very, very, very difficult. Because actually, you know, first of all, we have to cut out the kalesa. I mean, the wisdom develops through experience, through observing. Huh? I mean, that's, you know, in the West we call it ingenuity. All our big uh, inventions, you know, came through ingenuity, come, came through observing. I mean, even Newton, when he saw the apple fall from the tree, I mean, you know, I mean, he just observed it. I mean, he probably observed it a hundred and thousand times, you know, or maybe a million times before the idea crossed him. Why does this apple fall, actually? You know, why doesn't go it up in the air? And then he investigated. Huh? So, and that's the same thing for us, you know. Where do the kilesas come from? Huh? What is fear? What is pain? What is all these things that we have so, so many labels for? We feel sorry, you know, we feel depleted, we feel, you know, we feel tired. What is it? You know, what is the difference between tiredness, you know, and, <clears throat> and being energetic? What's the difference in feeling? In pure feeling, not in labels. In labels, you know, it's two different worlds. No? What is the difference between fear, lust, anger, greed? Huh? Do we know that? No. We think only in these labels of greed, you know. Greed is not good, you know. Hate is not good. Yeah? But we don't know that. How can we overcome something that we do not know? That we do not understand? Huh? We cannot overcome it. Hmm? So I sometimes say, you know, if you want to overcome hell, you have to swim through the fires of hell to understand what is hell, you know. And to know also, you know, if you want to overcome heaven, you have also to know what is heaven. What is it like, you know? What is the difference between heaven and hell? Is there actually a difference? Huh? I mean, if you want to overcome the world, I mean, you have to overcome hell and you have to overcome heaven. Huh? And, and certainly human. So, I mean, you have to know these things, you know, otherwise you're constantly pulled. Oh, I'm afraid, you know, I don't do this, huh? I mean, that's not wisdom. That's not knowing, you know, that's just going, you know. If you see a snake, you know, some <coughs> king cobra, you know, and then observe it, you know, what is it? Huh? What's your fear? What are you afraid of? What actually happens, huh? I mean, she can bite you, huh? And then you will die. If she doesn't bite you, you will live on for a little while and then die. So, I mean, your death is just a little bit earlier. Huh? <laughs> huh? I mean, think about this, you know, that is investigating you know, in the right way. Hmm? If some people come, you know, you see, if you see some thugs, you know, coming, you know, wanting to beat you up, you know, I mean, there are two ways, you know, you can run away. But if they are standing at the next corner, I mean, <clears throat> there's no way. Hmm? I mean, what are you afraid of, you know? I mean, the, like, later on, I mean, if they beat you up, I mean, you just go to the hospital, you know, and fix your bones and, and whatever it is, and bruises. And, I mean, what is that? What? I mean, we are only afraid of this body. Huh? Mm. Huh? Huh? You're only afraid of the car. You're never afraid of the driver who sits in the house. I mean, he's quite protected, the driver. Huh? In the car, huh? You're only afraid, or oh, constantly afraid, you know, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm, you know, I have an illness, yeah? Somebody tells you, you know, you go to the doctor, he sees you, terminal stage of cancer. No more three months, then you go. Wonderful. Huh? And then look at all the fear, yeah? What comes up? I mean, the thing that can die is the body. 
Of course, if a person doesn't have money, you know, if his car breaks down, of course he's very afraid. Because then he cannot own another car. He cannot buy another car. And we are afraid, you know, because of two things. We are not actually afraid of the death. We are afraid of the pain of death. And we are afraid of what is coming after death. That's what we are afraid of. Most people are afraid of because they, they know or they have the inkling that they go to hell. That's why they're really afraid of death. If somebody knows that he's going to heaven, I mean, why should he be afraid of that? Huh? <laughs> huh? Huh? We have all done bad, you know, including myself. Huh? I've done bad deeds, you know, I've gone against the five precepts, you know, because I didn't know. Or I was too careless, you know, I didn't care. Hmm? About 30 years of my life, you know, so I have gathered them, you know. When I counted it up, it, 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 it really amounts, you know, to 50 or 60 years in hell. Just in these 30 years. Hmm. I just, you know, was curious how long I'm going to spend for these little deeds, for this lie and for that lie, for this deceivement, you know. For this sexual misconduct, how long do I spend in, the, spend in hell, you know? So I, I counted it up, you know, one time, you know, until the age of 25, and then I was sick of it. You know, I, I had about 30 to, to 50 years of hell. That's what I'm afraid of. You know? I mean, we are, you know, we are stupid when we are born. We don't know, you know, somebody who knows the religion, you know, who gets in touch with the religion very, very soon. I mean, he, will, he won't do the mistakes that we have done. Hmm? He might not do the mistakes that we have done. Hmm? But that's why we're afraid of death. Hmm? First of all, pain of death. Huh? Because it tears this body apart, you know. Look at death, you know, Marana Sati. Yeah? I mean, Sati being mindfulness of, of death. Huh? I mean, the Lord Buddha praises this very much. Huh? What actually happens when, when the body dies? Huh? What goes out first, you know? Huh? Then look at the stage. You know, when, in the first thing that goes out is the breath. When the breath stops, what happens then in the body? You just need to close your eyes, you know, and experience it. Poops! You know, everything is tearing apart. Huh? Because the breath holds it together. The breath stops, you know, click, 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 click. Hmm? Just observe it, you know. Just observe your own breath. I mean, you have died a billion of times, so I mean, you know what death is like. I mean, because you've looked at it, you know what, what is happening. You know? Observe it, you know, and look at it. You know? And then the next thing, you know, the fire is gone. So, first, air element. Next is fire element. So it becomes all stiff. Oh. And then look at it, what is happening, you know, and then look at it, you know, take it as a contemplation, you know? take it as a com contemplation, let your, you know, put your body in front of your eyes, you know, and let it down, you know? and see what is happening, and see, you know, what, it, what is actually, you know, happening. And then you see the fluids, the, the body fluids coming, you know? and then it starts slowly rotting away, you know? or some animals feed on it, you know, whatever. And at last, you know, the, the bones, even the bones, you know, go. That's death. But that's death only of the body. I mean, you are always, you know, I mean, when you look sometimes, you know, when, when you live close to a trunk, you know, I mean, look what happens to a car. It's the same thing. <laughs> huh? We are. The chitta is not dying. The driver of the car is not dying. It just hops into another car and then he drives on, you know, forgets about his old car. No? And forgets about his old life as well, you know, and does the same stupid mistakes over and over again. One life, the next life, the third life, you know, a million lives, a billion lives. And he's never satisfied because he doesn't re remember how often he has been in the city. How often has he been a teacher? How often has he been an engineer? How often has he been this, you know? And sometimes he has been poor, sometimes he has been rich, sometimes he isn't, you know? Sometimes he was a slave, sometimes he was the master, you know? Sometimes he was a king, sometimes, you know? Oh, 
you what's up? You know? When you, when you look at life, you know, what is there? You know, you get up in the morning, you, you feed yourself something, then you do something. If you're polite, then you can say you do something. If you're, uh, if you're talking according to the truth, you kill the time. Then you eat something and then you go to sleep. And the next morning you wake up, you know, until the time of your death. From the moment we are born, you know, to the end of our life, we are waiting for one moment to die. And within this meantime, you know, in the period of you know, why we are alive, you know, we kill time. By doing this and by doing that. Of course, you know, we don't say it so bluntly. It's only me who says it so bluntly, you know. We said we do something very, <clears throat> you know, we help other people. Huh? That's one thing, one thing you know, we, we can say, huh? by killing time. We help other people. Or we do this or do that for the environment. We protest, you know. Or we fight a revolution, you know, to get, you know, get free, you know, from the Russians, you know, who occupied our land, you know, a long time ago. Whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, what we do, you know. We try, you know, we find some purpose. We find some, you know, some explanation, some rationalization for what we are doing, isn't it? But actually, we're waiting from the moment we are born, you know, according to the truth, to the moment we die, you know, for, for our death. Just to go into another life, you know. Entertain ourselves, you know, it's the same thing. You're killing the time, entertaining ourselves, yeah, doing something senseless, you know, whatever you, you, whatever you want to call it, you know. I mean, and once we have realized it, you know, then, then we find the way to a monastery, you know, to a teaching you know, that tells us, you know, that, you know, that there are other things, you know, that these things, you know, are not as real as we, 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 we believe them to be. And that there is a way out, you know, then, you know, we hear about the, uh, we hear about the four noble truths, we hear about karma, that all the things happen to us. It's not because somebody else does it unto us. It's because of our karma, because of our own doing. Hmm? I mean, the Lord Buddha, you know, gives so, such nice, you know, explanation. Now, for instance, a person, you know, a person who lies all his life. Next life he is reborn. I mean, he will, you know, the moment he opens his mouth, you know, a foul breath will come out. So that other people will stay away from him. Mm-hmm. I mean, the incident was, you know, that they caught a very beautiful fish in the sea. I mean, the moment they, they, they brought it up, you know, I mean, this fish opened his mouth. I mean, nobody would, you know, they, they just threw him back, you know, because he has such a foul breath. Another person, you know, I mean, we, we, always, we always admire beauty. Yeah? Be a beautiful woman or be it, you know, a handsome man, yeah? Where does beauty come from? It comes from giving ourselves, you know, making ourselves less important and making other people more important. Helping other people, you know. If you help only with our hands, you know, the Lord Buddha says, only our hands will become beautiful. If you use our whole body, you know, to help other people, you know, to serve other people. I mean, to be servants, you know, then the whole Buddha becomes beautiful. I mean, it's it's a teaching of the Lord Buddha. It's karma. You know? Whatever you do will have results. You know? If you sow potatoes, you will reap potatoes. You know? Not wheat. Ah, everybody knows it. Each farmer knows it. Huh? But you know, next life you have forgotten that last life you have sown potatoes. In this life you want wheat. So we get angry at our own karma. We cannot accept it. Hmm? Somebody who is generous, I mean, he will be rich in the next life. So look at the people who are rich, you know. They, they didn't do it, you know. They, 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 you know they, they put the seed down in their last or in their previous lives. Huh? Not only one life, but previous this life. Huh? So this life, they are immensely rich. Huh? So, and when they are immensely rich, they turn into very greedy characters. Yeah. And then the next life, they will be very poor. That's how things are changing. 
just when we look at the handsome people and the beautiful women, they will become very conceited and do not, you know, think think better of themselves than others, mm. look down on others, mm. and that's where they fall ugly. <laughs> just becoming the opposite. That's how things change. Not always a rich person will be rich. Only if he does the things that lead him to rich. Only if he does the things that lead him to beauty. Beauty. But the moment, you know, we are rich, you know, we think we can do anything. That's why we fall down. So, I mean, even if you run up the mountains, you know, <laughs> you have to <laughs> the only way is to fall down. So don't run up a high mountain, you know, so you, can't, don't, you don't fall that high. <laughs> huh? Keep it, you know, keep it. You know? And only this, you know, I mean, this is just, just a little bit, you know, of the teachings of the Lord Buddha. I mean, he saw it all. I mean, he saw it over lives, you know, the characters, how it changes, you know, how it develops, you know, what this kind of character you know, leads to in the, for, in the next life, you know. <coughs> How, you know, the, that character, you know, can change into something else. So he says, you know, don't, you know, don't fall for that, you know, because everything can change. If we had this time a good life, you know, the next life can be really miserable. We are, we are going to be thrown into the prisons of, of, of uh, what is it, um, Sibirsk, Siberia. Siberia. <laughs> <laughs> Next life. I mean, this, this life we live in the king's house, you know, and next life you are born in the prison of Siberia. Huh? Mm. So something like that, you know. It's not only, uh, I mean, you can be born as a Palestinian, sir, you know? mm. Palestinian, you know. I mean, you know, and then terrorized by the, by the Israels, you know. Or you can live, you know, 50 or 60 years ago in Germany, you know, and be a Jew, you know, and, you know. Huh? Yeah, yeah, opposite. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in Germany, we say the oppressor of today is the oppressed of tomorrow. I mean, that's a standing idiot. You know that? Yeah. So everything changes. There's nothing constant in this life. Eh? So that's why we have to develop wisdom, to cut the kilesas. Eh? To cut the three armies of kilesas. Eh? The first two armies are greed and hate. Eh? And where are the... Uh, where are these armies hidden? These armies of greed and hate are hidden in the body, are rooted in the body. So we have to destroy the body. I mean, not physically, but mentally. Our idea about the body, we have to destroy that. To root out the kilesas of greed and hate. And then, then there's delusion. So we have to investigate. Sanya Sankara, that means the memory and association and thought. And of course, you know, in both groups, you know, throughout feelings, you know, for, for mental, bodily feelings for the body investigation, mental feelings for the mental investigation. So, that's where delusion holds. You know? I mean, greed and hate comes before, you know. I mean, you can't even see the army of delusion that comes afterwards because the army of delusion, you know, Pulls, pushes greed and hate in front of us. So all what we can see, huh? oh, I'm such a deluded person. You don't even know how deluded you are. Because you can't even see it. You can't even fathom it. Because all what you see is greed and hate. You know? Only when once you destroy greed and hate, I mean, you will see delusion you know, in its full measure. And you have never thought that you will understand it. It's amazing. Hmm? And then once you did the, the, the delusion, there's still a vicha. A me, a vicha, what does it mean? What does it translate? Wanting to know, but not being able to know. Not wanting to know. It's also the same thing. I don't want to know this. It's a vicha. I don't know, I don't want to know this body. You know how ugly it is, huh? How loathsome it is, huh? And when I talk about body investigation, I mean, just take your favorite pill, you know. You have a pillow, you know, that is warm, soft, you know, nice. You love it. It's your Fritzchen. <laughs> That's what we call it, yeah? <laughs> you put your head on it, you know, you always sleep so nice, you know. 
I mean, some, some, some children carry their pillow always under their arm, you know. Then, you know, some, somebody tells them, you know, open your pillow. Hmm? They look around, how can I open it? <laughs> you know, and they, say, and they give you, you know, they give you a way how to open the pillow. They open it, you know, and it's full of warm, stinking shit. Hmm. Would you ever put your head back on this pillow? Would you close it up, you know, and put it back on? No, never. Just throw it out. <laughs> Isn't it, Michelle? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Before you loved it, you know, you cared it, you know you. It's the same with the body. The moment we do an investigation of the body, that will be the end result. We open it up and see it, how low some it is, and we <coughs> never take it again. Never even, you know, never even think about it. Because we've seen it, huh? we've seen the nature. So, and with this end, I end the talk. <clears throat>